All right. Well, I've messed up everything. <laughs> hello, hello. Uh, let's do the astounding science fiction tag. Uh, it's a tag created by the limitless mind of Michael K. Vaughn. Uh, and um, yeah, yeah, I, I figured, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm not like a solid science fiction dude nowadays but um this was science fiction is always kind of like a core thing of me as an early as an early kind of a, a teenage male reader uh and i thought it'd be worth doing and actually kind of as i was kind of going through these questions i i realized like oh actually maybe i actually i still i still keep my still keep my uh finger in science fiction so I, I might as well i might as well give this give this a try and it's actually it's yet again another good tag for making me think about myself and myself as a reader uh because basically being a reader is me um and and actually i think i'm pretty sure michael michael probably discovered me because i yacked on about all of the uh, barsoom novels by edgar rice burroughs uh and i think that's maybe where michael actually uh, discovered my ugly mug face. So we have that science fiction connection uh, in uh, to get, we had that science fiction connection. So I figure, yes, yes, I will definitely uh, give this tag a talk, uh, try. <laughs> I will talk. Oh my God, I will talk. Oh, oh, you have no idea. I'll, I'll let you know how much talking has already been done before I've even started this video uh, when we get to it. So let's, let's start off with a question, shall we? Question number one. What was the first science fiction book that you read, and what did you think of it? Um, I think the very first science fiction I read was probably uh, A Wrinkle in Time by uh, Ma Madeleine L'Engle, uh, uh, part of her Time court, uh, Quintet, uh, first published in 1962. It was one of those kind of, I don't know if it was scholastic, but it was definitely kind of one of those young kid books that actually... Um, that I probably, I got to before I was able to kind of get out my own and get science fiction. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I really, I, I kind of love the kind of the coziness of that book. Um, I think actually, it's funny, it's one of those books where the more um, fantastically science fiction-y stuff was made l less of an impression on me because I've in rereads it's like the kind of the craziness it goes to the end doesn't have as much of an impact on me as the stuff with the family the family um and the early parts and uh them talking about kind of uh kind of mathematical physics physics kind of theories probably still go over my head now but uh there there's definitely that um I definitely didn't finish the quintet uh because I I even though I didn't really catch it in the first book uh, it becomes glaringly obvious that there's a very heavy kind of christian allegory allegory thing happening here um sort of along the lines of c.s lewis and uh definitely as a child i didn't like that <laughs> uh it wasn't that i was probably as atheistic then as i am now but just it it did never never sat right with me um the other books i should mention are uh, the uh, the Star Trek TV no novelizations by James Blish. Uh, I remember being in like eighth grade and hiding from bullies in the library. And that that's what I would do is I would read the Star Trek um, no novelizations, which I think they basically would have like a couple of episodes in each book and, and James Blish had turned them into, uh, into just kind of straight, into straight stories, which... You know, kids, back in the days before the the easy kind of VCR or you know what a VCR is, but you know, streaming before before Star Trek was on on Netflix, before Netflix was beamed into your house, uh, it was a very scarce commodity. And for me, Star Trek was actually probably first and most uh, was was probably first experienced as the written word uh, was written science fiction is how I, I how I first uh, made my Star Trek made its impression on me. So that's always, that's always sort of something that I, I remember of, of my, um, journey into science fiction. Um, so yeah, yeah. Uh, number two, what was the last science fiction book that you read and what did you think of it? Um, I th the last one was the gangster, which is uh, Scott Sigler, a part of his, uh, GFL series, which is a fun, is a fun kind of half science fiction, half, uh, half sports, uh, sports, sports series in the most simplest terms of following a, 
uh, a, a human uh, uh, quarterback who plays with all these crazy different aliens and all the crazy politics and, and stuff that's going on there um, before. And it's funny because I was thinking, oh, how much science fiction do I read? It's like, well, actually, I read Space Opera by Catherine M. Valenti, which was is great language stuff. But uh, in the end, it just um, I, I did. The characters weren't active enough. Network Effect. Now, this is where I can get my science fiction creds going. Network Effect is uh, Martha Wells and is I think it's number five in the Murder Murderbot Diaries. And this this won uh, the Hugo Award this year for uh the for not for best novel and uh also they have a series award and the murderbot uh diaries won for the best for the best series so i accidentally uh have uh, read read all of this uh yugo award love stuff uh the yugo awards is basically kind of like science fiction fans vote, vote on what they think is is uh the best the best of the best it's kind of it's kind of a people's choice award but these are science fiction fans so they they have their own particular kind of like mm, standards i you know i love science fiction fans so i of course i'm going to think it's better than the people's choice award does the people's choice award actually still survive i would have no idea i'm completely out of touch um, yeah, yeah. So that, that, that probably gives you, uh, the thing of where I am in my science, science fiction. It's like, I'm not like super, super up on science fiction, but I, 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 I'm still, still there. And Hey, I, I, I read a Hugo award, the Hugo award winning novel for the year. I accidentally have read, um, and at the moment I'm uh, reading, uh, the future home of a living God by Louise Eldritch, Ed Erdrich. Uh, which, uh, hey, uh, is kind of, is, is literary person doing kind of science fiction? It's, you know, we sometimes, uh, that, uh, hardcore science fiction fans get, uh, get, uh, riled. Uh, don't talk to Steve Donahue about, uh, about, um, Cormac McCarthy's, uh, uh, science fiction work. Uh, <laughs> they'll have, you'll have, he'll have words for you. Um, okay. Number three, if you love science fiction, what made you love science fiction? Um, and yeah, this, this is one of these, this is the question where, oh God, pull up a chair. <laughs> cause you know, I was thinking about that cause I was thinking it's like, oh, it's, you know, adventure, it's info dumps. It's, 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 you know, imagination. And then I was thinking, it's like, no, no, Jay, think about where you were. Um, you know, I was a young dude who was miserable in school, probably not that particularly, you know, just feeling pretty crappy about myself. And I was look, I, I was looking for somewhere where I could find authority. I could find kind of, um, voices that would speak to me with a kind of authority. And I, these are kind of like male, male voices. I have to say, I, this is me growing up in the eighties. I was looking for male authority. I was looking for kind of father figures and you know, you know what science fiction had those father figures. They had the, the people who knew they knew what was wrong and how to fix it. And they were going to fix it. And they had heroes that, that, that knew all that stuff. There was a kind of a, there was a kind of a nice weird kind of a power power fantasy there, but a power fantasy of the mind. Cause like I knew skinny little teenager that the body wasn't going to be going to be my, you know, being a strapping guy was not going to be my thing. I was like, Oh, I could be, maybe I could be smart. <laughs> this whole being a He-Man thing isn't working out for me, but maybe I could be smart. Um, and it's funny cause I, I look at something like, um, uh, stuff like, uh, 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 uh Jordan Peterson, and people like that today and how they uh, can really appeal to uh, young males who just don't have a direction and maybe don't have that kind of guidance uh, in their life. And um, they, they, they the, 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 a lot of, there's a lot of young fans who kind of latch onto that. Uh, and it's like, you know, I always try and go from the thing of like, yeah, 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 Jay, never, never look down on those people. Never, never scorn them because I think about how I, how how I latched on to people like Isaac Asimov, uh, like Robert a, Robert E. Heinlein, probably the the Uber example, um, you know, as as somebody who was going to give me kind of some kind of a security, some kind of a path forward, uh, and that it was going to be a sexy one where I was going to be I was going to be awesome, 
they're um, in there. So, you know, if I'm being honest, you know, I love, I love the info dumps. I love the, the, the adventure. I love the kind of thinking of different ways, but it was like a part of it was like, I'm miserable in the way that I am in the miserable young eighties teenager. I was looking for that, um, not only escape, but a blueprint of like how to be, how to be. And, uh, I, I think that's why I love science fiction. That's why I love science fiction at that time. I think my, I think that has changed. <laughs> I, I think my, my particular neuroses and insecurities have shifted. So they're slightly different. So there maybe isn't that kind of an emotional tie to it anymore. And to be honest, science fiction has become more, much more richer and much more inclusive and, um, you know, has actually opened up more that, um, there's far more to excite the mind that you don't have to bring as much of that emotional weight into it. And I mean, and this is not to say that at that time there were not fucking kick-ass um, female uh, and, you know, people people of other things. These were straight white male males that I was obviously latching on to uh, because I was growing up in a super sex sexist, homophobic society. And it's like, God, I think I bounced. I, I read a bit of a Samuel Delaney book at the time and was like, ah, ah, had, 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 had. had had serious kind of reactions and put it down and just didn't come back to it because that I was not ready for that. Definitely. Definitely. Um, but, um, uh, so, you know, there's so, there was so much more that I was missing at that time. So that's not to say it wasn't there. It was just, I was definitely of a majority of people at that time, not seeing it, not, not getting to see it. And who oh, is it so awesome that we have that we have that today. That is so great. That is so, that's the reason why science fiction is still alive for all the people who say, Oh, I want the old stuff. It's like, yeah, if you wanted the old stuff, uh, dead, if you wanted science fiction to be dead, you would only have the old stuff. It's like, we want the new, we want the new voices. Uh, we want really, really different ways of looking at stuff. So yeah. Yeah. Love science fiction, love science fiction. And yeah, that is probably the question that's kind of at the core of this tag for me, I think. Um, that I wanted to talk about because yeah, yeah, it's, I get it right there. I get it right there. Um, number four, what is your favorite science fiction movie? Um, so, okay. Okay. You got to split this up. There's the, what is your favorite science fiction movie? The one that you're going to tell to impress your friends, which is probably going to be for me is Solaris, uh, 1972, uh, directed by Russian director, Andrei Tarkovsky from the Stanislaw Lem um, novel, which actually I tried Stanislaw Lem, but I've only ever been able to find kind of like really crappy translations and I've never actually connected to him. But this movie, oh, this was like, this was a, it's like an art, art movie. It's these beautiful long takes really, uh, really getting you into kind of um, this kind of uh, how how science fiction can flip things and make you see things differently and also just make you understand the very limitations of being a human being. Um, yeah. Wow. So there's that. There's that, which I probably have only seen once. <laughs> and then what movie have I seen probably like 5000 times and uh, just 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 uh, is just like, oh, my God, if I'm it's like if it came on the TV, I just I would sit down immediately and start watching it from wherever that would probably be Starship Troopers, the 1997 Paul Verhoeven uh, take, uh, which is um, is 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 uh, definitely uh, taking uh, Robert A. Heinlein's original book and kind of peeling off uh, Starship Troopers. The movie is a, a fascist uh, is, is, is a, uh, fascist, um, propaganda film. Want to know more? Click here. It's like, it is a fascist. It is movie that is said, like it's posits that the, the viewpoint of this movie is like a fascist state and they're making this movie. Um, and within that Paul Verhoeven just slips all this kind of ridiculous stuff while taking the original story of R Robert E. Heinlein, who has got much more Robert E. Heinlein is not a simple man when it comes to his views on politics and stuff like that, but he's definitely probably, um, he's either right wing or he's libertarian. He's somewhere, he's somewhere in there. Paul Verhoeven is definitely coming from a, from a, uh, I'm going to make a fascist movie and, uh, make it with, make it super gory. And, uh, he's somebody who survived, uh, Paul Verhoeven himself, a uh, Dutch, 
Dutch filmmaker survived uh, a uh, a uh, the, the the actual the actual Nazis. So when he's when he's talking about fascist state, he he knows what he is doing uh, and does it deliciously and cheesily uh and uh you know just 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 an amazing amazing uh, amazing amazingly fun movie um probably um runners up in this thing would be under the skin uh and ex machina uh which are two movies that are still in my brain which are actually uh they're science fiction movies that have actual you know those thought experiments um but also just kind of amazing kind of just interesting character work they're very much in interested in um it's interesting one under the skin is sort of very much of a kind of you know an alien using the sexiness of uh, of of um of of our of our favorite event of avenger oh, god damn it names of course immediately sli um slip my brain you know black widow uh, using using that to lure males using males kind of reaction to that to lure them to their doom well well ex machina has got to be just a thing about just kind of uh also the male gaze uh being dissected uh in this in the guise of a of a computer a uh, computer uh turing test uh, uh movie uh you know both 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 movies are kind of really working with that the idea of um of of uh, kind of masculinity and ma male drive uh, in in those books or conceptions of so yeah yeah that would be that uh, number five what is your favorite science fiction TV show well sh sheer hours you know it would have to be it would have to be all the star all all the Star Trek um, uh, iter iterations well not all of them I I have bailed in some of the uh, more recent recent ones though under the decks I I, I quite like ah oh, we could we could be here for hours if I went into that so there's Star Trek. Yeah, let's just take in that as a given. We already have me reading the uh, novelizations, um, me uh, sitting with my friends and just making relentless fun of the original series uh, when we first first saw it, and all the the music and the what we saw thought as the overacting of the time. I've actually kind of uh, well, you know, there's that, and then probably being true Star Trek fan with the Next Generation, and then really loving Deep Space Nine, and then falling off of Enterprise. Oh, and there's the Jane Away one in there too, which actually now in retrospect seems a lot better uh, now that you see what what comes in in the modern era but yeah okay okay all that all that all that um probably uh battlestar galactica which is uh ronald ronald d moore d moore ronald moore uh from for who 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 was very frustrated working within the confines of star trek getting to do battlestar galactica if if it stops with them on the dead with them on the dead planet like if it had stopped there i think it that would have been the perfect end point we're in the, that wasteland and it was like oh you know, that would have been the perfect stopping place for me. Uh, if that, if it had stopped there, that would have been a perfect series, but it didn't, it went on. So not that, not that perfect, not that perfect. Um, you know, Black Mirror overall, uh, as kind of like, you know, anthology show, uh, Utopia, the British one, which I only ever saw the first season of, which maybe that's why it's, it's such a perfect series for me is because I've only seen half of it. It's perfect. Cause I don't know if they messed up. I think it got canceled. I don't know if it made it for, through its full season, uh, first full second season. I love the soundtrack to the British Utopia too. God, I love that soundtrack. I just play that all the time. I, you know, which is super creepy. <laughs> just playing it on headphones, so not 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 around my victims or anything like that. I've got a love for Torchwood, in the Doctor Who on in the Doctor Who side of things. I love Torchwood. I only I only ever really enjoyed the rebooted uh, Christopher Eccleston. The Eccleston, uh, um, Doctor Who, and then after that, I completely fell off it. I fell off it. I only, I only stuck around for uh, the kind of various Torchwoods, which kind of, it was very, very cheesy and very kind of um, adult, inappropriate, and stuff. Let me just check and see what. Oh, thank you, Theo. I have eyeglass things, which I'd prefer if he, he didn't eat. Theo loves eating stuff. Okay. <laughs> Let's let's skip on to another category. Number number another question. Number six. Uh, what science fiction book do you feel should be read more often? Um, I hate should questions, Michael. <laughs> you should should not do should questions, Michael. Um, 
a science fiction book that I really, I love, but most people never seem like, even the people who love it seem to think, oh, I never want to read that again. I have actually reread it and it still really, I feel like it still holds up, is Broken Slate by Kelly Jennings, uh, a 2011 uh, science fiction novel uh, with really, really, really crappy cover, um, which probably shows you probably how it's probably released by some kind of independent press but you can tell just by that that cover is is, is not the greatest but uh it's what taken from his family's merchant ship at the age of 14 uh martin eduardo endured years uh, in the brutal contract in, in brutal contract labor system on the planet julian uh now a contract rebellion brews uh, and this is very much like, and Julian, as in uh, Julius Caesar, a very kind of, this is a kind of a Roman uh, constructed uh, society, uh, which, you know, the Romans had were a slave, were a slave society. Uh, and um, yeah, it's, it's really well done. Uh, I really gets into the kind of the, the, how, how slavery kind of that, that twists the psychology of both master and slave. Uh, um Martin is uh, is gay uh, and has relationships, uh, has a sad, a masochistic relationship with his master uh, and has other kind of more healthy relationships. But also those are still twisted. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's a really, really well, con really, really well constructed uh, story, uh, which. Yeah. It's it sticks in it sticks in my head. There is a follow up to it which I still haven't read yet, though. Disappointingly, I think it skips forward like several thousand years, so we're we're, we're losing. I think we lose the the characters of of Broken Slate. So uh, maybe that's one of the reasons I didn't go back to it. But yeah, yeah. So I better really love this. But I, I this is the book that I think. Hey, hey, why not give it a shot? Maybe if it's cheap somewhere. I don't know if it's cheap anywhere. Number seven. What is your favorite science fiction story? Uh, this is the, this is the, this is the question that took me the longest because, uh, the story that immediately came to my mind was the novella, The Persistence of Vision by John Varley. Uh, it's published in, was published in, uh, 19, 19, was published in 1978, uh, in the magazine of fantasy and science fiction. Um, and it was like that, I think is, I, was, I, I immediately thought of this one. Uh, it's probably because I haven't read a ton. I don't read a ton of short stories, but this one really, really had an impact to me. And I really, I, that immediately came to mind. Um, and it was like, oh, it's, but the thing is when I answered that, I was like, I haven't read it in a long time. Uh, so maybe before I start trumpeting how great of a story is, I should go back and read it. So last night that's what i did is i sat down and i read it and i i have i have some thoughts which if you want to see a 20 minute video of me just talking about this one uh one one novella you can go you you can go and look at it um it is it is a great story uh it's a great story that uh is also repellent <laughs> and uh and and uh, it's repellent in a couple of it's repellent in a couple of ways but at the same time, still, um, still retains its power over me. At the same time, I have a feeling that uh, anyone who came to the anyone who came to the story now would um, would probably just go with repelled and and toss it aside. But uh, if I'm going to be honest about myself, uh, I still hold I still hold the story. Uh, in, I still I still love the story. I wouldn't. I, I, I wouldn't, re I wouldn't recommend it to anyone unless they, uh, un un unless, uh, uh, why would I, I wouldn't recommend this to anybody. <laughs> um, it, unfortunately it falls into the Robert A. Heinlein school of old dudes with, uh, with, uh, young, young women, young underage women, um, which is a real shame, uh, that, that probably, uh, well, no, it's not a shame that that cuts it off. That's that's unfortunately, if you're going to put that in your book, then that's that's in your novella. That's what's going to happen. But uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but I still I still love the story. the 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 final lines of this story still give me the shivers, which um, you know I have to own, while still saying I think it's a 
it's reprehensible. <laughs> it's it's still while well, still saying it's reprehensible. So that's my very um you know it's that's that 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 kind of goes to that kind of thing of complications with literature, um which is good to have. It's good to I I, I think. I think for myself, that's the good thing to hold in, hold in me is, uh, hold, hold, hold in me that you can love something and also fucking hate it at the same time. Uh, and I kind of treasure that. Um, but, uh, never undersell, never undersell the shittiness of something that's even shitty parts of something, even if you love the great parts of it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's my answer to that question, Michael. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. Number eight, what is your favorite uh, science fiction book? And I'd have to say probably it was uh, when I was a teen, it would have been Stranger in a Strange Land by Robert A. Heinlein, a 1961 book of this boy who um, he gets uh, his his. Uh, he, he he gets raised by Martians. This is back when Martians were, there was the kind of the, the very much Edgar Rice Burroughs thing that uh, Mars was a lush kind of uh, place with, with air and had fauna and there was Martians there. And these, and this boy uh, gets raised by Martians and then he comes back to Earth uh, very much in the, in the, in the kind of spirit of the free love moment. Uh, he sets up, he ends up being kind of set, setting up a cult becoming a quasi kind of Christian uh, Christ Christ figure uh, in, in this book. And I was super into this book when I was a teen, this was like my jam and wow, I'm so afraid to actually go back and read this. It's just like kind of just refreshing myself with plot synopsis and stuff like that. I just like, uh, and I've heard people talk about it and go, oh yeah, that's in there. Oh yeah, that's in there. All, all the kind of the, the kind of the, um, creepy, creepy uncle stuff about Robert A. Heinlein definitely, definitely comes in there now. Um, so that was then, uh, now, um, I'm trying to think, uh, cause like, you know, I, I've enjoyed like Alistair Reynolds novels, though I, you know, the characters don't stick in my head from those books, but maybe I, I, at some point I should reread them. But the character, if the characters don't stick in the book, then I don't know if I'm, I actually care. Octavia Butler, uh, is so amazing in all of, I, it's hard for me to pick one of her books cause she's just so, such an amazing, uh, science fiction, science fiction writer, uh, Nnedi Okorafor. Uh, is kind of a recent one who I have frustrations with, but is like, wow, she is, she is, she is quite the amazing thing. Theo is up on the chair eyeing what he's going to get next. Uh, here, I'm just going to take that away from you. All right. Um, I'm going to go with, but I'm going to go with, um, it's kind of a, it's a, it's, it's kind of one, kind of a series of, of books by Jeff Vandermeer. Uh, now, uh, Jeff Vandermeer now is no well known for the Southern Reach series, but, um, uh, starting with Annihilation, which was turned into a movie, which I feel for me, for my tastes, he went too far into the literary side of science fiction to the kind of the, he, he went overboard for me. He went over overboard into the literary side of thing. I like my science fiction with, yeah, maybe with some lit stuff, but I love, I love it with also kind of pulpy dark stuff and for me that would be his ambergris ambergris uh series um which starts with uh the city city of saints and madmen uh 2002 goes on to shriek and afterward and finch uh his detective novel which you know that that is totally a, a detective novel uh kind of a pulpy t detective novel uh, uh thing of this um this mysterious this mysterious uh city of ambergris where um it, it is it is he is also kind of it's also kind of probably considered the new weird uh but it's definitely kind of got like kind of a i'm gonna go with i uh, for me that's that 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 is the kind of science fiction i go into just these odd unknowables unknowable worlds i mean maybe this is fan maybe this i don't know maybe this is fantasy fantasy science fiction there's some kind of a weird crossover point in them where you just don't know where you are. And that's where I like to be. <laughs> oh, and I would be remiss if I uh, didn't, didn't, didn't mention uh, because that this is called the astounding science fiction book tag that um, Michael's referring to astounding magazine, which was in its great heyday of the kind of the golden era of science fiction was uh, edited by uh, John W. Campbell, who published all the big, the big great guys 
of, of, of science fiction that there is uh, a, a biography, a group biography called Astounding, John W. Campbell, Isaac Asimov, Robert A. Heinlein, L. Ron Hubbard, and the Golden Age of Science Fiction by Alec uh, Navala Lee, which was published in 2018. And it's a group portrait of all these four dudes with uh, warts and all, and lots of warts, and I mean, you do not expect, you, you're, you're, I'm, I was not surprised that L. Ron Hubbard comes off as sort of a sociopathic, uh, tr you know, um, flim flam artist. Um, Joe's, John W. Campbell, uh, is, it was kind of a, a, a racist guy who had a very fixed idea of what science fiction was and he molded his writers into what that was and he rejected everything else and he kind of he narrowed what science fiction was for uh, a lot of time in there well probably i mean maybe maybe promote maybe promoting it but is somebody who who um the science fiction community has been learning to learning to kind of uh has has been reevaluating uh, what what his what his place is in science fiction a, a place where uh, a lot of people are now in the tent that he probably would not have been particularly uh, he would not have been interested in wanting their voices there but they are here now and that is so amazing um, Robert E Heinlein actually comes off to my point of view as as more of an interesting complex character Isaac Asimov. Um, is was was really unfortunately a groper harasser of women uh which is really shitty but it's also one of these things that's important to know and you know yeah yeah it's a good book to read it's a good book to read because it really gives you a portrait of this time and it gives you a portrait of this time that isn't whitewashed when i grew, grew up in the 80s it was very all hagiographic all these wonderful guys everything's wonderful everything's wonderful we don't really talk about l ron hubbard because he's gone off to to do uh uh to do dianetics and to uh to uh end up you know founding scientology uh and all this stuff we don't really talk about how that could be a kind of that could be a kind of the spin out of venerating uh these the great men that one of these great not so great men uh actually founded a freaking religion you know, is just, um, is not, not, is one of those things that you, you think that's like that, that maybe does play back into what I was talking about at the beginning of, I was looking for guidance is L Ron Hubbard, uh, veers far more over, uh, into what we have nowadays of people who are very eager to take advantage of people's, uh, wanting to, to guidance to say, yeah, come and I will guide you. Give me all your money. Kind of guidance, kind of that sort of thing. So, yeah, that is, sorry, Michael, that was me yakking and yakking on. And I've got 20 more minutes of me yakking on about uh, that goddamn novella, uh, The Persistence of Vision. If you'd like to, if you'd like to hear that, I'll put the link up, link, link, link at the end here and link down below or whatever. If you want to hear me yak about it even more. Um, but um, yeah, thank you for the tag because this is science. I love science fiction and science fiction is a large part of, of uh, me as a reader. It's not everything of me as a reader now, but it's definitely, there's still, it's, it's in there. And it's, it's kind of me as a person too, uh, for the good and ill. So yeah, thank you. And more videos later.